everybody, my name is Shortline 819 and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! We haven't played this game in a hot minute, but I got the wonderful idea today while sitting in the worst class ever, which is, what if I go back into Kerbal Space Program and do another big project? Um, and this big project is going to be... Oh, I shifted around a little bit. That big project is going to be... Oh, I don't have any save games, because this is a new installation. That big project is going to be a a mun base. Yes. Um, I don't know where this cat flag came from, but oh well. Uh we'll always go with the traditional the stars and stripes and stuff like that, as you do. So we'll name this a uh, mun base. I still have no idea what this mun base is going to be. I I I ha what it's going to be called. I I have an idea of what I want it to look like. Um. But I have a mod pack put together by great, great fr internet friend, Spud, Spud Nutmus, um, the man himself. Uh, and today, it includes a bunch of mods. Um, among them, among them are some of the near future mods, a lot of visual mods, stuff like that. Um, what else? What else? Uh, uh, a life support mod. Um, which I actually need to take a look at, um, bunch of near future stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, containers for life support, airlock, yes, fertilizer, uh, life support tanks. Did you know that Bad Rats is only $2 on Steam? No, I did not, but thank you, thank you for putting together this mod pack. We have just started. Um, so yeah, I want to do a mun base project. Uh, cause I realize I haven't built much in the way of, like, proper big mun bases before. I've done plenty of space stations. Plenty, plenty of space stations. I love building space stations. But I've never done a proper base before. And just for some, um, I, I have some ideas. And we'll, we'll go over those ideas first. So the, the first thing is I don't actually want to start right away with building a mun base. Because obviously you can't hop in right away to just building a mun base. Well, I mean, you can, but not not the way I play. You know, just like how in real life, I've been reading up a, a lot about the International Space Station recently and its assembly and how, you know, even before the first crew arrived, there were several shuttle flights and whatnot preparing the station. And, you know, of course, there was Shuttle Mirror before that. So I want to try and do something similar with, with the mun, where or first, we're not going to begin building the base right away. We're obviously going to be setting up a comms network around the MUN so we have continuous communication. We're going to be um, scanning satellites, scanning for ore and whatnot, uh, which, you know, that's more for, like, just sort of roleplay reasons because I've already picked my location where I want this base to be, uh, which is going to be near next to the Neil Armstrong Memorial. Obviously, we got to go and, and locate and scout that out, so we're going to need a rover. And then, of course, for my lander, we're going to have to develop crew transport. And I was thinking that I could use just to make things simple and to cut back on rendezvous and docking. Uh, not that I can't do it. Like, I've done it. It's second nature to me at this point. Um, I was thinking we could just do a direct ascent lander, like a big, massive one. And then, of course, we got to develop the landers themselves and put everything together and stuff like that. So I think our short-term goal over the next couple of KSP streams is going to be this. And that is going to be, uh, that is going to be, turn the music up a little bit. Uh, we are going to develop a lunar comms network. We're going to get lunar surface scanning satellites, and we're going to get a rover to the location on the moon in which we, which we want it to be. So we're going to find the Neil Armstrong Memorial, basically, or the Apollo 11 Memorial. Um, that's kind of our short-term goal. Obviously, we're not going to do that today. Uh, we're going to do that much, much later. Um, I am going to stick myself to a rule where I'm only going to fly on stream. Um, I Building, though, I, I will say that I will give myself the right to build off-screen just in case. So, I was, I was thinking about how to do this, right? Uh, and obviously, our first couple of missions are all going to be uncrewed. Um, probably the biggest one of those is going to be the rover. Uh, I want an uncrewed rover to, you know, go and scout out the uh, the, the surrounding terrain and, and to find the memorial. 
but I also decided that I want to future proof it by adding in some external command seats so I can turn it into an unpressurized sort of rover. So I think just for today, you know, the rover is, is, is an interesting aspect to it. We're going to try and build the rover. So just, just the rover today. And I already have kind of a design in mind. Um, is that 1.5 uh, inches? Or uh, 1.25? Um, yeah, that is. Okay. So, the the basic idea is that this is going to be a rover that's going to, it's going to have its own fuel reserves. It's going to land itself, just to make things sort of simple. I don't have to develop a separate lander that it drives down off of, as cool as that would be. Um... I do want to make it so that I can, at least in theory, probably hook up trailers and stuff behind it by slapping a docking port. I want it to be decently, maybe not stupidly, stupidly big, but decently sizable. Uh, not not a small little dinky sort of thing, but something that can actually, you know, go around the moon uh, rather uh, with a lot of grace. So, uh, hmm. But yeah, I I will want one of those fuel tanks as up. Oh, I uh, I forgot the controls. Um, one of those fuel tanks is just sort of a. Uh, I have an idea because I did build a while ago. I built a rover um, that I really liked, and I'll be trying to recreate that to a certain degree. So. Let's see. Uh, get out Kerbal Engineer. Well, Kerbal, we'll get Kerbal Engineer away. Um, I don't know. That might be too big. What's the other uh, piece? I think that should work. Um, do I have a picture of this thing? Oh well, we'll just we'll just continue on. Um, like how it is. Uh, as I said, I want this thing to be able to land itself. So, if something like, if we start with something like that. Uh, let's see, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see, sent you a wiki for the LS mod TLDR. Kerbals need a constant input of electric charge and supplies in order to survive, as well as habitation, which is an arbitrary resource determining how much space they have. will determine how long before they get homesick. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, we also need for this, although probably we don't need a fuel tank that big, because this is, my, my idea is that this thing is only going to, uh, land for the last couple of hundred 100 meters down to the surface, like we'll jettison the, the stage, the braking stage, a kilometer above. And then we will... We'll just go back down. We do need batteries, of course. Uh, batteries are always useful. Um, how many batteries should we have? Should we have, uh, three? As I said, it's been, been a while since I last played Kerbal Space Program in any serious regard, so, uh, I might be a bit, uh... I haven't built anything in a while, too. So. Uh, let's see. I remember... Okay. So. There we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's, that's sort of a good... A good... A good base to start with. Um... So, excuse me. Sorry about that. And then, on the sides, do we want this to be a solar-powered rover? Uh, probably. I don't really expect to be driving this thing around at night all that much. Uh, mostly because I don't, I don't really like driving at night. I mean, that goes for real life as well, but, uh, let's see, what, we made, like, a triangle 
shaped sort of thing. <laughs> uh, honestly, that looks very ridiculous. I don't know exactly what I'm going with here. Um, let's see. So, the front... Hmm. Here, let me, let me get up a... I, like, dig through my KSP folder to find a picture of this thing. No. Uh. Let's... So, so long ago. Oh, my gosh. Digging through my KSP folder. Um. Let's see. Uh, okay. Maybe instead we will have... I do need places to put panels on. Because having, having solar panels stick up out, I've done that before, but I don't... Yeah, like something like... I don't know why the, those are... Okay, yeah, those are connected to there. Um, and center of mass. Center of mass is back there, so we are going to need more. Something like that. And then we could strut, strut it up at the top. We're building a rover right now. Yes, yes we are. I am um, just, just a, a kind of a, a solar-powered rover that I can eventually, that can land itself... And that can, um, solar-powered rover that can land itself. Uh, so, okay. And then, let's see. Are there any good? Well, those are good, but they're not, like, I need to fix this right now. I have a I have a certain look that I'm going for for this thing, and uh, you you'll see you'll see as it slowly comes together. Uh, so let's see, there we go. Ah. Uh. Okay. So yes, this this is actually strangely appropriate, uh, me starting this Moonbase project, because of course, uh, tomorrow, today, the uh, Intuitive Machines Nova C slash Odysseus 1 lander has gone ahead and actually entered lunar orbit today. Of course, it launched from Falcon 9 a couple of days ago. Um, that has gone ahead and entered into a into a low Earth orbit or low Earth orbit, low lunar orbit, and will be landing tomorrow. It's gone surprisingly well so far, considering how Peregrine went. But uh, I, of course, wish them the uh, the best of um, the absolute best of luck in in getting that thing uh, getting that thing going. Um, so let's see. Those solar panels right there. And now... Um... Let's see. Hope your moon project is going well. Well, thank you, Crimson. Um, I am just... I've just started. Uh, but I hope you have a nice night, too. Uh, SP structural panel. SP structural panel. Uh, let's see... SPS twenty five. Uh, Southern Pacific structural panels. Um, payload coupling structural. Here we are. Uh, no. You're now. Now I'm curious. Okay. I had, I swear, I did have a, a robotic rover idea, a, a design, that I'm trying to, like, vaguely remember how to replicate it, and I just, I just don't remember what, what it looked, it looked something like this, and I remember it being very good, but, uh, let me, let me go ahead and look through my, 
my literal years of KSP uh, images. That's when I went to Drez. I don't remember. It was it was a really good rover. That's all I remember. Uh, Columbia Station. Oh, that's oh, that was my ISS replica. Uh, no, no. Oh, come on. Um, gonna go do stuff later. Take care. Th thank you, uh, Spud, for joining. Got hired into truck driving. Sadly, my phone service is going to end. No, that really does suck. Well, good thing you got a job now, so. ASP Robotic Rover. Uh, or was it? Because as I said, I want to be able to configure this thing so that I um, can eventually like use it as sort of a truck of some variety. Uh, oh, this this is what it was. My KSP series from like two years ago. Um, I probably still have this rover around. You know, I probably do. Okay, that actually... Yep, okay, so... Hold up, let me go ahead. KSP save games. Uh, I actually have Shortland Space Program, Ships, SPH, Habitation 1, Minmus Express Rover Craft. Uh, I might have this rover design still around that I'm trying to re replicate somewhere. Um, saves, uh, yeah, saves, one base, ships, SPH. Minmus Express rover craft. Um, surface base design one, podium. Uh, Shoreline Space Program, VAB. Do I have a Mon Express Flyer, Mon Express Craft? Uh, miscellaneous stuff, refueler, space bus, truss segments. Nerva Tug, all these terrible, terrible craft designs that I made a trillion years ago. Um, this is like a two, three year old sort of thing. Uh, but yes, that is excellent to hear. It's good that you will have some sort of income now. And I know you've been talking about uh, wanting to wanting to uh to be a truck driver for quite a while now okay that's not it um that is that is not it mon express well that's a that's a launch vehicle um hold up uh look at that stupid f it, there it is oh my gosh that's the rover that i'm talking about um might need some modification, but that is in fact the uh, the rover. Okay, I want to um I want to modify and repurpose this thing uh, because I just really 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 like it. There's a crew rover as well that I would would like to repurpose. Um. Of course, considering they're both going to require a bit of modification. If we just switch back to uh, Robotic Mon Rover. Save. Okay. Great. Now I don't have to fumble around trying to build this thing. I think today we're just going to focus on building all of these craft. Um... So yeah, this this is the this is the design. This is honestly, it is not. I don't remember it being that bad of a rover design, like at all. This this was actually rather nice. Um, a rather excellent design, uh, if I recall. And 
yeah. I I wanna I want to repurpose this thing. So, uh, the photovoltaic things are okay. Well, first I gotta. There are some struts that got screwed up. Um, there were some. Let's see the parachute. I don't remember why this thing has a drogue chute on it. Uh, I, I this is me reaching back almost three years ago since I built this thing, and I think I wanted to um, land it like on Duna or something at some point, so I attached a drogue chute to it. Um, let me just yank that thing off. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um. Huh. Um, and then that's the surface scanning package. Uh, so we can just shift that, shift that up a bunch. Um. Actually, I'll just remove that for now. I'm still trying to figure out uh, mystery goo containment unit. No. Oh yeah, I, I do remember giving it eyes. Did I did I give it brake lights? No, I don't. I didn't. Okay, so first thing I have to do is I want to modify this to eventually carry uh, to carry crew on it. Um. So if I just go ahead, I think the way I'm going to do that is. Hmm. I can move the dome lights down here, right? Giving it eyes, of course. Uh, I do want to call our. I do want to. Um, it's exactly like brake lights. I do want to. I I will give this thing brake lights. I absolutely love giving my rope. I absolutely do love giving my my rovers. Uh, brake lights, for whatever reason. Um, I think it is... Oh, no, I keep pressing the wrong button. Um... Yeah, I, I do absolutely love giving them brake lights. Uh... I don't know why it keeps... I, f I forget how you, uh, duplicate parts. Oh, come on. It, it's been a while. Um... KSP how to to duplicate parts i totally forget alt left click click okay i uh yeah yeah there we go i i just completely forgot okay so alt left click these things are now going to have front lights and rear lights there's another rover that i would i would really like to repurpose from another save from an older save um I believe that one did, because the, the rover I'm repurposing this from did have, that was a stock save, or, you know, stock parts, mostly. Uh, the other one, uh, not so much. Uh, that did have a couple of, a uh, couple of mods. So, I think the easiest way I'll be able to, I guess, change this a little bit is... Just that, and then obviously go ahead, disable staging on that, and then, oh, uh, let's see, get rid of that. That I have to keep for the simple fact that, uh, life support containers, let's see, uh, Life support containers, because adding adding the um the the crew compartment to this is mostly just um why is that there? Oh, that's to connect up the uh connect up those to the rest of the craft. Adding the life support containers, I don't know how that would work exactly. Like, do I need life support for this, or do the Kerbals just have life support in their EVA packs by themselves? I would assume yes. Um, 
And while I do want to add a command seat on it, I don't want it to be, like, very, very big. Uh, let's see. We can add just two, two seats. Or maybe we could stretch the rover a little bit, too. We could stretch the rover in the front a little bit and add another seat in. I would also like, just for the contingency, to have room to put a spare tire. Because you never know when you're going to Apollo 17 yourself and accidentally break your rover. <laughs> and, uh... I mean, the Apollo... The, the, the rover that they broke on Apollo 17 wasn't... They, like, broke it. it. It They broke a fender. They broke a fender off one of the rear wheels and it kicked up dust like hell. So they just fabricated maps... Uh, into a new fender design. They didn't, like, break the fucking thing. Uh, if, uh, if, if, um, Dean Cerner and Harrison Schmidt had actually managed to break the rover on the surface of the moon, like, get it not running, I think that would be, uh, uh, I mean, that would suck. I mean, it doesn't matter, because, you know, walk-back rules and whatnot, but, uh, they had the walk-back rules. All right, I know what I'm gonna do. Um, uh, let's see. This is, this is more or less sort of a, an all-purpose, uh, pressurized, uh, unpressurized sort of rover. As I said, my main reason for adding the crew seats is so that I don't have to walk or use my jetpack to, uh, go from the point in which, where I, the point in where I land to the, uh, to the, uh, to the memorial, I can... It gives me... Driving this thing close to it sort of gives me a bit more flexibility in terms of uh, where I can... where I can have my landing site, which is good. Uh, it is quite a long rover, though. Center of mass is kind of high. Kind of, kind of. Um... I, I do really like this design, though. I think, I think, I remember this working quite well. Um, so there we go. And then, uh, let's see. I do sort of want to strut it from there to there, just because. Uh, let's see. Now we need... Yeah, there we go. The center of mass is, in fact, in the middle. Uh, we just need another command seat back there. Oops. Nope. Uh, let's see. Oh, nope, not that. I want to select the command seat. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, let's see. Base it out one more. Yeah, I'd, I'd space it out one more. Just because. Uh... These are the structural panels, which I guess are fine. Um, there we go. So there's our little, there's our little guys, our little, um, things for that. The center of mass is still, it is still very much in the middle, which is where I do want to keep that. Um, and then, of course, having those drain at the same time, probably it won't affect the center of mass, because by the time... It's just back to, back to, uh, back to dry. Um. But yeah, there's, there's a little unpressurized thing. Uh. Let's see, cargo. Let's see. I did say I did want to keep inventory. There we go. Um. I do want to have a little cargo thing so that if 
if something happens, um, the rover, the crew in the rover aren't, you know, they are not fucked, basically. Uh, so. Let's, let's see right there. Uh. Uh, let's see. There we go. And then in there, I will just go ahead and I will put, um, containers. No. Uh, where are... Gotta put the flag on it somewhere, of course. Where is the... the spare? Like, the, uh, the spare... We're gonna need the surface scanning module again. Um, so, uh, where shall we put that? We can put that up here to balance out the spares. Like a big, like a, uh, it's like a big uh, walkie-talkie or a multimeter or something. Uh, oh, nope. I want. So the Kerbals don't, like, bang their frickin' big-ass heads. Uh, there we go. So three, three, uh, three guys for now, because our initial... My, my idea behind this is I want the, the initial rover is just a, um... It's, it's, um, it's an unpressurized rover that can also ferry crew back and forth. Uh, just, just a little bit to a certain site, to a specific site or something. Center of mass is still very much in the middle, which I do think is rather nice. I will go ahead and, let's see, uh, have the crew very quickly test this thing out. We'll retract the antenna. Uh, robotic, robotic Mun Rover. I don't know what we should call this. If anyone has any, uh, ideas for names, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, we do need, uh, let's see. What is it? EVA repair kits? Yes, we, we very much need these EVA repair kits. Four, because, well, you can never go wrong. Uh... Uh, experiments kit, no. Fuel cylinders. We'll add one of those just in case. Um, just in case they need it, because they'll have their jetpacks with them the whole time. Um, when it comes to life support, uh, let's see. Cryogenic coolant tank. I will have to figure out how the life support thing works a bit more. There are supplies, which, you know, maybe... I don't, I don't expect them to be going on that long of a journey with this thing. Um, there are a couple more things that we have to do, uh, which is... I want to put some struts down. So, there to there. And from there to there. And then I will also put struts from... Uh, let's just say here to here to here. No. Don't wanna, you don't want to put struts there. Something like that. Kind of keep, keep the Kerbals in. <laughs> um... Uh, well, let's let's focus on getting these struts done first, because uh, I do like center thrust is slightly behind the center of mass, which, uh, as I said, these things only really matter when it comes to landing, not so much when it comes to you have an SAS module in there, which is nice. It only really matters that much when it comes to, to actually landing the stupid thing. Um, so I will, I will put the, 
the uh, the what's it called in a in we'll put it like that. So, um, I don't know why. Oh, there we go. Up, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh we will we will take this thing on a uh, on a test test ride in a in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. No. Okay, hold up. I'll just row out the engines for now, and then we can come back and test them later. I just I just need to get these done. Uh. The struts. And then... Next to restock, I can just have them be... Actually... Uh, let's see. It's... Because, you know, I like... I like my, my vehicles to look rather... I like my vehicles to look, you know, like they're well put together. Um, oh. Uh, let's see. Oh, nope. Fuck. Ah, come on. That haven't played, haven't played KSP in a while, so. If, uh. There we go. And now... Yeah, there we go. That's that's what that should look like. And then over here... Let's see. We'll put that... Like... Like that. And then... Here we go, and yeah, that that looks that looks kind of neat. Um, and then we will we will have the rover down. Well, we need to put the engines back and also put it bring it out on a on a little test drive. Um, but uh, for right now. Here we go. There we go. And now that is perfect. Take a look at that. It's our little, little, I don't know. It reminds me of some mangled piece of construction equipment. I, I, very, it's very funny. Um, let's see, because Got the Kerbal in there, the Kerbal's there. Uh, we need the engines again, so center of thrust, center of lift. Um, do want... Like that. Turn those that way. Ugh, gotta give my hand a break. Oops. I, um... I was at the worst class ever uh, on on Wednesdays. Uh, Wednesdays is when I have my worst class, and um, it's 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 a bad class because it's a three hour lecture where the teacher does not stop. I think we have like a ten minute break in the middle, but it's just it's just information overload the class. And by the end of it. My mind, it just goes numb. So... Uh... Let's see. My my mind just sort of goes numb. But, um... Uh, and of course, I've been working for the... Either been working or at school for the past 10 days. Which has not been fun. Tomorrow is my only day off. Tomorrow's the only day... Thursday's the only day of the week. 
in which I'm neither not at work or at school. And a center of thrust. Which does kind of, kind of suck. That lines up stupidly well. Okay. Um. So tomorrow, I'm just going to sleep. I'll probably go and get uh, lunch somewhere, because I always like to uh, have something special, at least once a week. Um, probably get some, like, because most of the time I eat at home, but uh, I'll probably go and get some, like, netzel or something, like German food. And then I will go, and I will... Uh, my D&D club is meeting tomorrow, which is, is always fun. Uh, let's see. There we go. There are there are our engines. Alright, so I believe that this rover is, in fact, finished. Is there anything else I need to do? Oh yes, the action groups. Um, when lights come on... Uh, Let's see, when, when the lights come on, uh, toggle light, just those lights. And then when that comes on, uh, when the, yeah, okay, so that's actually already set. That's set. Actually, let me just go ahead and, so the brakes, 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 toggle light, and I want these lights to be red. Because they're brake lights. And, uh... I want them I want them to be cool, cool brake lights. And we can also set these to gray, because it, it will, uh... It helps them blend in a bit more. As for these fuel tanks, we just keep them white. Keep them... Uh... Keep them gray. Kind of help sort of blend in. Uh... Okay, excuse me, someone is calling me. Okay, sorry about that. I am back. Um, I guess I do have flags on this. I didn't even realize. Uh, of course, we always we always need flags. We always need the stars and stripes and the uh, in the 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 worm logo. So maybe on this we'll have some international participation. Maybe maybe this rover is built by like I don't know who's a country of uh, that has a space agency. Maybe this rover will be built by Japan. Maybe this is a Japanese rover. Or a European rover. Although we all know that Europe can't do cool things in space, so uh, probably not them. <laughs> uh, just kidding, Europeans. I give you I give you all a hard time, but uh, it kind of sucks that when Europe, you know... Oh, look at this cool thing we have, and then they never, you know, fulfill it. Just basic. I don't need anything else. Um... Yeah, that's that's the only thing that I really need left, which is the uh, the flag. I exactly know where to put it. I guess we can put it here. Put it on the front. Uh. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I am actually. Good thing that uh. Good thing that I have tomorrow off, because I am fucking shot shit, uh, in terms of just everything. Um, that I'm going to move over just a little bit. Uh, yeah, we'll move, we'll move that over. We'll also move it down. Or no, we keep it up there. I don't think the Kerbal's head is going to interfere with that in any particularly violent way, so I'll, I'll move that over. And then, uh, over here, I will put in the flag. So yeah, recently, 
And this is space flight related, which recently I uh I've been doing a lot of research that is not the mission flag. Uh that is <laughs> um Recently, I've been doing a lot of research into the International Space Station because, oh, that's not correct at all. Uh, let's see. If the flag is on the front, like, does it matter which way it's pointed? Because I know flag code dictates that the stars always must be advancing, so... But if it's right there, then... You're technically going forward... So I guess. Hello, Average. Welcome in. Um, that is actually something that I need to do. Uh, I, I, um, I need to. You redeemed create a Kerbal, and I will create you a Kerbal. Uh, KSP Eatbot. Uh, that is something that I actually need to do. How are you doing today? I am, uh, I am doing rather nice. I hope you are doing well. Alt 12. Okay, Kerbals. Uh, do you have any particular name, uh, that you want for this? Um, male, female, pilot, engineer, scientist, experience. Do you want to be, uh, courageous? Do you want to be fucking stupid? Uh, take, take, take your pick, and, because you had the redeem for it, so. Well, back to my, back to my trip. Oh, you were, uh, just popping to say hello? I hope your, I hope your trip is going well. I am actually getting a uh, something that might interest you, which is I, I am getting a new, uh, a new PNG, uh, which will be in some new art, which will be nice. So, I can um, see if I can get that up on screen. Actually, uh, do I have a uh, display capture? Anything that's like particularly sensitive that I need to get off my screen before I do that? Uh, nope. The hello desktop. Uh, let me let me just very quickly get that up. Uh, Discord has a shop now. Oh, I'm not fucking clicking that. No. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. Here we go. Y'all want to see something something cool? Uh. I, I am, oh, my friends are having a discussion about Florida passenger trains, oh god, I want to join in. I've been reading a book on the Rutland Railroad, which is very interesting, and I will get into that in a moment, because the Rutland Railroad is a fucking story and a half, um, but first let me just show you. This is some of the new art, this is being done by Stinkerdoodle, who is, who is very, very nice, a new, 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 new PNG, so, that's... That's something to look forward to, but, um, uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll just, uh, average, uh, yeah, average, average Kerman. <laughs> um, let's see, average, oh, oh, hot rat, average hot rat, uh, Sure. I'll make you an engineer. Sure. Sure. Okay. Create Kerbal. Kerbal created. Okay. Um. There we go. So Jeb, we'll have uh we'll have you uh you three as to pilot this stupid thing. Um, robotic Munrover. Still don't know a name. Still don't have a name for it yet. But um. We should, we should be good right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So they are right there. The Kerbals are okay. Uh, let's see. Pull up, I, I got utterly distracted. Uh, pull up, I'm, I'm typing something to my friend. Okay, we are we are we are so back. Sorry. Um, ADHD is a is a bitch, but uh, fucking a. All right, lights. Hello, 
The lights are coming on. I did not mean for the brake lights to come on, but oh well. Um, extend antenna. Brake lights are on while we do actually have brakes, which is nice. Um, obviously, uh, can this thing actually lift itself up off the ground as it currently stands? Nope. Actually, yes, yes, it can, just barely. Uh, wonk, okay. Well, that's good. Second of all, can this thing actually, like, traverse places? Yes, yes, it can. Driving tests. Yay. Um. Alright. Yeah, let's, let's just quickly drive this around the Kerbal Space Center. Uh. All the Kerbals seem to be pretty okay. I Oh, the brake lights don't actually come on when I toggle the lights. Okay, so that does actually work how it should. In terms of electricity, right? Um, okay, yeah, the electricity does go down, but we do have, uh, you know, we do have uh, plenty of storage, uh, 2020 storage on this thing to, uh, to ensure that even if it does go down, because it only goes down when we actually use the wheels, and most of the time you're just coasting, so that should be good. Uh, we are in direct sunlight, though, um, which is probably what most of uh, most of it's going to be. It does take a while to stop. We can resolve that by turning up the brakes. Um... There is no ladder, but there really doesn't need to be. A surface scanning module, run analysis. Resource analysis performed for Kerbin Shores. Nice. Green on. Hey, look at that. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, what's what's like the, the hypothetical top speed of this thing? So, if we like... If we do a test of this thing going over here, right? Will it be able to do it? Uh <laughs> Um Well, the roll cage worked pretty well. The kerbals have been protected, but <laughs> uh Let's see. What a fucking... Okay. Hold up. I, I can't spell the word arrangement. Sorry. Uh, that's... That's arraignment. Alright, sorry. I'm talking to my friends on Discord. Ah, oh, this feels so good streaming KSP again. Uh. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, a toggle screen and antenna. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's uh, let's do let's robotic Mun Rover prototype. I'm, I'm changing the name. I still don't know exactly what I should call this rover. Um, the Lunar Roving Vehicle. That's too lazy of a name, which is why they went with it in real life. The Lunar Rovers didn't get names. Letting it call signs. Um, I guess I guess they really don't... They really didn't need them on, on Apollo, because I don't know, I'd have to go go back... I, I, you, I have, fuck, I can speak. I'd have to go back and look through, like, mission reports and shit like that. Because I'm now genuinely curious to see, um, when they were out traversing on the LRV, what did they use to contact the crew, the call sign for the crew? Did they just use whatever the Lem was named? I would assume, because, well, there's only two guys down there, so there's no real need to do anything different. But, um... It's kind of a shame that the rovers did not actually get names. I think that would, uh, some, some creativity could be from the astronauts could, uh, could be on that part. But, uh, 
we're gonna we're gonna have a, a name for this. Um, how fast can this thing get up to on on Kerbin's surface? That's the that's the primary question. Um, uh, my friends are talking about sleepers, uh, railroad sleepers, and the various curse combinations that they are uh, that railroads had for them. So that's kind of neat. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about my Rutland book. Uh, I've been reading a book. The whole thing is wobbling. Uh, oh well. Uh, I have been reading a book on the a Jim Shanagasi book from the early mid '60s on the Rutland Railroad, which was this little little line, little beautiful little line. Up, oh, let's see what happens here. Yep, there we go. Um, that ran from Ogdensburg, New York, down through. Burlington and Rutland uh, to Bellows Falls and Chatham, New York. And oh, oh my god, what a fucking mess of a story that this is. Uh, it's, uh, it's delightful. It's delightful and just this is batshit. Okay, can we actually make it up there? Yes, we can. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Um... The uh, the book focuses a lot on the uh, on the rivalry between the the Rutland and the uh, the Central Vermont, which was the other big Vermont railroad, and how everything you know. The Rutland, the initially the the Central Vermont had the upper hand when the two were starting to be built, but then the Rutland through a series of fucking a. <laughs> uh, well, realistically, we're probably not going to be going that fast, but the rover does work, and um. Oh, initially when the two railroads were being built, that the, uh, the Rutland, uh, was kind of the worst off of the two, but the, they were able to beat out the Central Vermont via a series of, uh, interesting acquisitions, um, and, uh, eventually the Central Vermont got so fucking terrified of the Rutland that they basically gathered as much money as possible in order to just lease the railroad, so, that's kind of neat. Um... I would say, I would declare the rover is done. The rover is done. It, uh, it is, it is, um... Yeah, okay. So. Um... Now what? Well, the... Okay, what other uncrewed spacecraft do we need to build? We, we do need to build... The rover is the most complicated one. By far. Um, other than that, I'm actually going to auto-strut to... Grandparent part, just to make sure. Um, we need to build the survey, the survey satellites? Because we still have some instruments, right? We still... Excuse me. We still have the surface scanner and the narrow band scanner. Um, and I also like the magnet, uh, I'll probably put the mag, uh, magnetometer boom on there, just because it looks cool. Like, look at that, that's, that's really cool to see. Um, experiment storage unit, anything else? No, not really. That's cool. Um, <laughs> that is actually very cool. That's a cool module right there. Uh. The dome. We will. We will make a greenhouse. We will have this on the on the surface at some point, but uh, not right now. Um, let's see. Hydroponics module. That's cool. Okay. Uh, so we need a a re a survey satellite and a couple of relay sats. Um. I don't know how many relay sats we would need. Probably three to create like a, a lunar, uh, a, a geostationary uh, lunar constellation. Um. So yeah, I think in that case we will. Let's let's start on building out these these satellites basically i'll start with the this uh this bus this proba probodobodyne i like the uh i like the silver uh the the thermal insulation 
now these these things um these are cryogenic fuel tanks uh lh2 oxidizer liquid hydrogen yeah um let's see solar solar panels well actually rtgs would probably work best for this because um uh, RTGs would probably work best, considering that these things are not always going to be in. <laughs> they need to constantly communicate. They need to be uh, constantly communicating around the clock, and uh, they, you know, won't always necessarily be in. Um, what's it called? Uh, sunlight with solar panels. I do think that there is actually enough electrical charge in there. There should be. Um, I would like to give them some way to maneuver by themselves, so typically what I do for that is I give them a an RCS tank, and then what I typically do as well, even though it's not strictly necessary, is I always like to put little docking ports on the bottom, just because uh, um, it is, it uh, you know, just in case, I don't know, you need to deorbit this thing or something, there's a docking port there. Um, that does actually look rather cool, that sort of color scheme. Um... And of course, they need, let's see, they need, what's it called, life support? No, these are probes, engines. They do need uh, RCS blocks. And of course, we have Magnoplas Magnoplasmodynamic RCS block. I have not used these mods before. Look at that little, small little control moment gyroscope. That's kind of neat. Uh, let's see. I always typically just end up uh, doing them on like that, because uh, that is close to the close to the RCS. Um, although considering, okay, I do. We'll put those on the end of that because. Um, I like to keep the RCS blocks generally clear so that they can at least, uh, you know, pretend to do their things. In, in Kerbal Space Program, it really doesn't matter where the hell you put these. Uh, they'll thrust no matter what, but um, it's just sort of something that I, uh, I, I like, I like to, I like to see. We love to see it even, um, just so they have uh, just a general clear line of sight. Uh... I will move those um, uh, those RTGs because with this, um, obviously they need some sort of communication by themselves. Uh, that's not a relay, um, and they also need my idea is that I'm just creating a bus just so I can like swap out various things. Um, let's see, there is a decal which is nice, a text decal. Uh... We should probably go back to the rover and add that on somewhere. Just so that, you know... Oh, like, oh, this is the name of this rover. Uh, there we go. Yeah, okay. There we go. And now... Uh, let's see... My, my dog do be sleeping, snoring rather loudly, so that's, that's, that's fun. Um, yeah, that's, that's inserted in there. Uh, I, I know it's also not strictly, actually not, nah, that's okay. Um, and now, let's see. Life support, utility. Always, always, always just go ahead and put the flag on there. Just, just because. Um, put it, put it on, uh, on both ends somewhere. Um, it's just because it's just generally just nice to have. Uh, yep. I don't know why it's that high above.
There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to... Uh, oh, the flag. Come on. Come on. Hey, can I... Flag flat. Okay. Remove from symmetry. And then down here, if I can actually bother to select the fucking thing. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on, KSP. Come on. Come on, Kerbal Space Program. You can, you can do it. What if I just go inside the probe and then try and select it from there? Yeah, there we go. Um... Transparent background. I'm going to go ahead and set the NASA worm. So you have the, the worm is there. So that's nice. And now I am going to... It's utility. Anything else? No, not really. Um, near future launch vehicles, cargo, science, no. Um, antenna. Let's see. Uh, a rover antenna. Oh yeah, we do have multiple different antennas now, which is 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 actually kind of neat. Um, my dog is on the bed. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Direct antenna feed. No phased array. Obviously, we're gonna want these uh, these relays. You know, eventually. But for now, um, medium dish reflector. That's massive. Uh. Dish reflector array. Oh my god. Oh, that's that's James Webb. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is... That is massive. I think we're, we can use that on the moon. I want to I wanna save that for the moon. Like an Arecibo sort of thing. Um, let's see. I guess I don't really need, like, a big antenna for this. I just need... I gain antenna. I gain micro antenna. We a little small guy. Um... I'm just, I'm just having fun looking at the antennas now. Deployable high gain antenna. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a neat one. Well, uh... We'll go with, uh, we'll go with that one. I don't think it really matters for most of these, but, uh, you know, as long as we're within the general, actually, let me, now I'm doubting myself, uh, and a feed. Yeah, okay, I think, I think that one should be good. Hello, I am returned. Hello, Spud, I have successfully, um... Put together my rover. Now I am just working on um I'm working on uh my uh cracked antenna. I am working on my my satellite bus for my comm sats and my survey sats. So but I have I have gotten the rover um made and the rover works really well. So I will Liking the mod pack? Yes, yes I am. It's a uh, stock plus, which I it is it is. Uh, I I spent the last like couple of minutes just looking out all looking at all the antennas trying to determine okay which one would be like the coolest to have. Um. See no, eh I don't know about that antenna. Um. I did find the uh the James Webb antenna, which is. I, I've determined that I want to put that on the Mun somewhere. Um, not because it will serve any particular purpose, but just because it looks cool. Uh, let's see. High gain, yeah, just, that's a high gain antenna. I'm gonna go with the classic, you know. Sort of, hey, look, standard, standard high gain antenna. Uh, I think, I think I'm fine with just using that uh let's see that thing is a reflector antenna you need to point it at a feeder antenna and it boosts the signal uh what the high gain antenna or the james webb one because this is 
James Webb one? Okay, yeah. Well, I'm not planning on the James Webb one really, um... Being, like... I just, I just want it on the surface just because it looks neat. <laughs> if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh... So... Uh, let's see. There we go. Cracked antenna. Extend antenna. Does extend out of the way. Okay. That's... Uh, let's see. You could pretend it's one of those big radio astronomy dishes that have been proposed for uses on the moon. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, that's, that's, that's kind of my point, uh, behind using that thing. Um, because, you know, I was saying it doesn't serve any particular purpose for me, but it, it will look cool. <laughs> okay, let's see. Science, electrical, I think I said I wanted this thing to be powered by RTGs. Uh, this satellite bus. Uh, that is a, a neat one. Um, but I think for this purpose, I'm just going to go with the, the standard, uh, the standard just, you know, side mount RTGs. Uh, maybe not right there. I think I only really need one because, um, I don't know. Do I? Up two, just for redundancy's sake. Uh, let's see. I'd also probably want some batteries, also just for redundancy's sake, because, uh... But this, this is going... I am really enjoying this mod pack. Uh, I think this might just become my, my default for everything. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see how the life support actually turns out, because that's, that's what I'm most curious about. Um, let's see, so, you know what, and probably just because it looks cool, just because it looks cool, uh, I will go ahead and I will put some, uh, just some additional antennas on here, that's a, that's a micro relay, uh, no, having, having a micro relay would probably be nice as well. Even though it isn't strictly necessary, just having it, just because you know, hey, you know your your com your uh, your science sat can also relay uh, signals various places. Uh, let's see, micro re where was that relay antenna for small systems? Yeah, so uh, Let's see. I was originally going to play U4 tonight, but then, as I said, when I was sitting in the worst class ever, I was like, you know what? I feel like playing some Kerbal Space Program. Why? Why? Why not? Why not? Uh, but, um, yeah. All right. That is looking good. That is looking really nice. I actually am going to put another battery on it, just, just in case. Uh, maybe not one that big. Um, here we go. Uh... So we got our propulsion element, we got our core element, we got So this is this is a pretty nice base for a text. Oh yeah, you can set the text. Okay, that's actually quite useful. Um Let's see. Yeah, and then I can... Okay, that's actually rather neat, the conformal decals. Let me go ahead and... Or the, the decal thing. So yeah, and that will be... The scale up... Walk. Okay. Uh, then the depth... Uh, door. I just set it to 25. Capacity cut off. Edge wear. No edge wear. It's it's still still just new. Block. Okay. Um. 
Yeah, there we go. So this is going to be um uh satellite bus. Satellite 2024. Satellite falling to Earth. Oh yeah, there is that uh European Space Agency satellite uh that is in fact uh did it deorbit already? I think it did. So satellite satellite bus, right? There we go. And so there's our satellite bus. Now we just need to actually uh, put some relays on it. Uh, some relay antennas. That is a very big relay antenna. Uh, I don't know if I want one that big. Um, that's, a, that's a small one. That one's a neat one, too. That one, that one will work. That one will work. Um... So now, relay, or actually, hold up, satellite bus. Yeah, my goal for today is just to get all these, all these, um, these craft done. Uh, re, relay satellite. Okay, there we go. Um. And then for that, relay, and then we will put it in, of course, the NASA font. Or we can put it in Helvetica, because that's the font that they used for, like, labeling shuttles and whatnot. Um, so, let me just go ahead and... There we go, save. There's our, there's our relay satellite, and then we have our satellite bus, which is also sideways, so I will um, rotate it back to normal. Satellite bus. Uh, and now for this one, we need... Uh, let's see. Well, where was it? Utility... Um, utility, cargo, science, communication. Was it in under science? Yeah, the survey scanner. Yeah, okay, survey scanner. Yeah, there we go. So the survey scanner. Um, and we also needed the narrowband scanner, which rather big, so I don't know exactly where I'm going to put that. Uh, let's see. I guess we could just have it replace that, but um, uh, let's see. Actually, I, I have sort of an idea. We can put it on a, on a mount a little mount of its own. Uh, let's see. Oh, nope. Yeah, there we go. And then... Actually, I should probably rotate it like that way just to see would it interfere with anything. Uh, nope, no, it would not. Okay, that's that's nice. And then, uh, let's see. Uh. There we go. There we go. There's our there's our there's our relay set, and we will of course call this um, that text Helvetica. We'll set it as um, Lunar Pathfinder or Path uh, Lunar. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then we can shift it over to the... No, we can just shift it back to zero, and then... Um... Uh, Helvetica. The, the edgeware is zero, the cutoff. Remain at 50. The scale, I think I will decrease that one to... Eh, 25% still good. Okay. Um, set fill color. You can set the color? Oh, that's neat. Um, in that case, let me go ahead and just bring that up like that so it's not getting in the way. Oop. Lunar Pathfinder. Uh, Lunar Pathfinder. There we go. And... That text is how we want it. The relay. Uh, yeah, that text is how we want it. And then... The robotic Mun Rover prototype. So this was the rover spud that I that I put together. Uh, I do need a little, like, name plaque on the side. Um... So, let's see. Ooh, this is cool. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, it's actually, it's pretty nice, um, all things considered. This is based off of a rover that I used eons ago. In fact, what I did is I simply just imported that rover from another save and modified it to suit my needs. Um, the only thing, it, it's mainly meant as like a robotic scouting rover, but it does have room for Kerbals, so it's kind of a unpressurized sort of crew over as well, just referring people back and forth between parts of the base. Um, we are going to have another rover, which will be like a large pressurized rover meant for, uh, for longer journeys. But, um, uh, so yeah. In that case, um, I do really like these decals, to be honest. I almost like them a lot better than the actual, like, current ones. Uh, I don't know why that's not... Oh. <laughs> uh, it's just because the, de the decal is conformal. Okay, so... Let's, let's... Let's go ahead. <laughs> and... Yeah, okay. And let's go ahead and... Also, if you want to take a look at the life support stuff in the VAB... If you want to take a look at the life support stuff in the VAB, the green cube icon... icon. Okay, that's nice. Um... Alright, that makes... Okay, that, that... I was wondering about that, actually. Um... Edgeware zero, cutoff, nope. Uh, the scale, what does that do? Um, come on, can I select the, can I select the decal specifically? Where is it? Flag decal, okay. Wanna shift that over one. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Um, I do also want, because it is cool, uh, on both sides to have the little plaque. Uh, not because it's not that this actually does anything, just because, as I said, it's cool. So you will have... a little thing that says, this is a... A, a NASA rover that has, um, this is a NASA rover that, uh, has this name, and, uh, just, just neat, neat little stuff like that, um, yeah, there we go, uh, yeah, and have it, have it go in like that, and then with the flag decal,
Uh, let's see. Flag decal, I will shift that up a little bit, to the right a little bit. And then on here, I will have another decal. Uh, obviously not as big, but set flag, and we will set that flag to, of course, be where, where, where's, where's our good old, where's our good old worm? No edge wear. Uh, so. There's our, there's our, our nice little worm. Uh, and we will blow that up a little bit. Here we go. And then on the other side, I will have the same thing, but with text. And we will just, what should we call our little rover? What would be a good name? I don't want it to be some sort of generic name, like, uh, like oh, this is the, the, the lunar roving vehicle. Like, you know, I actually... Um, I was trying to figure out like what what should we actually name this thing uh because it's it's mostly a robotic rover but it does actually it will um it will have crew i, I pathfinder is like i've already used that name i don't want to use that again um depth 20. we'll set text to helvetica of course uh, let's see, lunar, let's see, the, the thug, <laughs> Woodstock, the Wo Woodstock rover, uh, Sure. Hello, Frazzy Zero. Welcome in. Um, we are designing various components of a, like the Peanuts bird, yes. And as someone who likes peanuts, I, I greatly approve. Um, as uh, we are, we are designing our, um, our, our, uh, all of our components for our lunar base, but right now we're not. Um, we're just designing the uh, all the precursor elements, so the the various um, the rover that's going to go and scout out the location, the scanning satellites, all that kind of stuff. Um, right now, that's what we are doing right now. Uh, that text. Uh, make it bold. Yeah. Okay. Um, there we go. Actually, that, that would, oh, that completely, oh yeah, because it's, it's white text, so, that fill color. Oh, there we go, yeah. Um, I will set it to that. Uh, set, come on, conformal flag decal, select flag, uh, NASA worm, there we go, okay. Um, uh, wood, okay, so, robotic, let's see, we need some sort of stupid acronym, maybe if it makes no sense, um, Uh, the dual dual mode because it's both can be used in a robotic and a crude mode uh moonar roving vehicle uh woodstock there we go and i'll i'll add the uh i'll dual mode moonar roving vehicle like like the peanuts bird okay 
that's our that's our dual mode lunar roving vehicle. Um. So yeah, we have that. We have the Mooner Pathfinder. Um. Oh wait, did I delete it by accident? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, save it. Save it so I don't accidentally um. Accidentally click away. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think all of these are done. Um. Pretty much. Uh. The Mooner Pathfinder done. Satellite bus. That, well, that's just, like, a bus for future things. The relay satellite is done. Um, I was considering calling my relay network, uh, Munlink. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I, because, I don't know. It sounds nice. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay. Um, now, so we got our first three major elements done. Uh, at least the payload. Now we have to design the rocket. Now, here's what I'm thinking. We can do this in three flights. Um, the first flight will deliver two relay satellites. And the second will deliver the, the Mooner Pathfinder and the satellite bus. Um, not satellite bus, and the third relay the moon um that's generally what i'm thinking so let's get up our relay satellite and we'll call this mun mun or relay launch mun link launch one launch one okay because i'm gonna open up another relay satellite uh, I want it to be like, um, you know how Ariane 5 has that thing where it kind of has that internal fairing where you can mount, um, mount, like, a payload on the inside and then on top and that encapsulates the entire fairing? Uh, my hand gestures, uh, fucking knocked my glasses off. Kind of want something like that. So... I think what I'm gonna do... A-E. Uh, someone is calling me. I will be right back.
Sorry about that, my dad called me, and of course the music I was using an ad played, so I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but we are back. Um, and, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, so what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was integrating these two payloads. Um, I'm seeing how I could integrate, uh, these two payloads. So, let's see, reroute. Uh, so AE, I need a, a fairing of some variety, uh, oh, nope, and then, hmm. so let's see, and then I need, trying to figure out how, what's the best way of doing this, upper stage engine map, that's for like, like starship or something um oh yeah spud new <laughs> new glenn they actually rolled out a well it's not a a complete new glenn but it is a it's like 50 to 75 percent of a new glenn uh out to lc36 today it's on the pad right now oh yeah i saw yeah of course amid much much rumor and speculation that ula uh has now been um bought by them which you know i uh i i've said before and i'll say it again i would not be surprised in the slightest if ula has uh been sold to blue origin by this point because it's 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 not just burger it's not just you know eric burger saying the, f the fact that it feels weird is it feels weird that um feels very weird that it's real yeah it does uh, in many ways it, uh, it does feel rather strange, but, uh, it is, it is in fact real. Um, so. Has there been any more news about that, or, or just the same stuff we saw, like, a month ago? Well, from people who aren't Burger, no. Uh, there hasn't really been any more news, except for the fact that, um... Amazon or Jeff Bezos sold off about 2.5 billion dollars worth of Amazon stock, which is or around the same amount of uh, which is around the same price that ULA is speculated to go for by uh, by non-burger people. Um, we I, I think that ULA is a uh, because we do know ULA is up for sale, right? That is something that is confirmed. But it's just sort of like, okay, now we just gotta wait and see, you know, who who will who will be the winning bidder and and from what I've seen, you know, from from everything from the the general feel I get is that we're sort of close to a potential winner being announced for that. Um. Uh. Vulcan, Atlas V, and New Glenn all flying at the same time for the company would be very weird. Yeah, and I was I was thinking about this the other day, right? And, you know, that would be... That would be sort of remarkably strange, but, um... And I don't doubt that, but... You know, I've seen some people say, you know, oh, if, if that were to be the case, then they would probably want to retire, you know, Vulcan or, uh, in favor of New Glenn or, you know, something like that, but... What, what you generally have to realize is that Kuiper, they have to get up a ridiculous number of Kuiper satellites in a very short period of time. So while flying Atlas V, New Glenn, and um, Vulcan in parallel may seem remarkably strange, they kind of have to for a decent, decent while, because they need to get all those Kuiper sats up. Yeah, agreed. Interestingly enough, in my little... I went around posting this in several Spaceflight Discord servers, right? You know, my, my thoughts on all this, right? And they listed New Glenn as a as a medium to... I listed New Glenn as a medium to heavy lift rocket. Um, and I had people correct me saying, It's not a medium lift rocket. Oh, it's not a heavy lift. It's a super heavy lift. You no, know, people saying, Oh, New Glenn is, you know... It's, uh, well, y you know what, it can lift, it can lift those things. It can act as a super heavy launch vehicle on the lower end of super heavy, 
but it could also be a perfectly fine medium launch vehicle. It kind of occupies sort of a strange position in that regard. Uh, New, Gra New Gland is very big, yes, yes. Um, but I just I just found it funny that I, I was saying, oh yeah, New Gland is, is like this, and I had people who were like, oh, it's, you know, you're mistaken, it's, it's actually this way, when it's like, dude, okay. What is with this fairing? This is the, uh, this is my way of mounting two satellites on top of one another to launch them in the same, in the same, uh, in the same thing. So there's actually going to be another fairing which goes over top of this, um, which, uh, will be very cursed. That will cover everything, uh, which is, as I said, will be very cursed. If, if you look up, like, um, here, uh. Ariane 5 rocket dual fairings, right? Um, Ariane 5 has this capability to... It has, obviously, the outer fairing, but there's also, like, an inner fairing that you could put a satellite in and then mount another satellite on top of that. Um, so that's what I'm kind of... I'm kind of replicating. Yo, dog, I heard you like fairings. I do like fairings. Uh... Okay. So I am going to set text relay one. Hey! Welcome aboard, Hoxie How. I I hope you are enjoying the stream. Welcome in. Um, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well, of course. So, uh, uh, let's see. Relay two. Also, I just realized that these are not the same like uh these are not the same uh in the same position or are they no they're not Huh. okay well i'll fix that real quick but uh yeah so spud this is what we're doing uh we're gonna have this which i know is is remarkably cursed but I don't really care. This is how I'm doing this. Um, let me just slide, slide that in so it looks, looks, looks good. Um, let's see, and then, but yeah, just like that, and then we're gonna have another fairing that will be like like this nope got up fairing will be like like that so there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh talk about fucking cursed but oh well um there there you go that's 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 your that's your fairing um let's see uh i've been pinged who have i been pinged by Okay, um, let's see, just so my sanity is kept, I am going to, uh, just change this, so that, oh, fuck, what the fuck, uh, nope. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so relay one and relay two, and I'm also going to just auto strut these all both to the heaviest part so they don't like fucking die or something. Um, so that's that's the fairing. The big fairing pops off first. The second fairing will only pop off once you go ahead 
and deploy this thing. I uh, I do want to test this out real quick just to see if my blurst system will actually function properly. Um, but uh, yeah, let's 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 see real quick. Uh, let's just quickly cheat set orbit set orbit yay we in orbit uh okay so boy that off first yeah that works and then undock which will then pull forward and then that will Uh, let's see. Deploy. There we go. Alright, that actually does work. That very cursed, cursed system. Um. Uh, and then undock. There we go. Yep, okay, both of that will work. Did you hear that Gangaeon OFT is now scheduled for Q2 2024? Oh, I, is it Q2 or Q4? I forget. It's scheduled for this year. Um, here, actually, let me look it up real quick. Uh, Gangayan, uh, OFT. Uh, let's see. But yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very close. And, uh, just gonna be really cool. Very cool. Um... And, uh, okay, so now that we actually got the fairings to work, which is nice, um, I will go ahead and clamshell deploy, clamshell deploy. There we go. Okay, so we have the fairings, which is, which is nice. Um, and now we just gotta build, have to build the rocket, but, uh, um, let's see. Uh, let's see, yeah, okay, um, let's see, uh, let's go ahead and open up the Mooner Pathfinder, because I want to see if this will work with this too, so, let me go ahead and, uh, Moonlink launch 2, go ahead and save that, uh, Relay, Excuse me, Relay 3. Not 32, just Relay 3. Oh gosh, I am getting the hiccups. Um. Okay, but what if triple fairing? Sorry, Spud, I'm not doing triple fairing, as funny as it would be. Um. Let's see. I will have to reroute it to that, just temporarily, right? And then... Get that out. Uh, and then... There we go. And that's gonna require a bit, a bit of a bigger fairing, but, uh... Oh well. But it does, it does... Mostly fit. It, it will, it will continue to fit. Uh, let's see, actually, let me go ahead and just do that real quick. And if I delete that, will the internal fairing? No, okay, so the internal fairing did actually go away. Uh, oh, hey! Welcome aboard, a Goofy Goovers. Welcome. Um, hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, thank you for following. Um, I just delete that. Okay, yeah. So that that does in fact work. Uh Munlink launch two. Integrating these payloads is a, uh, I said, quite quite funny. This is gonna require a bit of a bigger fairing. Which Yeah, understandable. Yeah, something like
Something like this. This is going to look ridiculous mounted on top of this rocket, but oh well. You want your mega hammerhead fairing? There you go. Okay, so there's your there's your fairing. Uh and based on how that was before, that should all work. Uh fairing extension. Relay 3 and Moonar Pathfinder. I wish you could make cursed asymmetric fairings, what like ULA proposed for uh for um Atlas 5 that one time. The the hyper cursed uh is some some sort of hyper cursed fairing. It was a uh, I don't even know really how to describe it, but it was not symmetrical. That's all I was going to say. Um okay. So we have these two, right? Um, Purple Engineer. Near Future Systems Manager. Uh, I don't really need that. I'm just opening, pressing random buttons. Okay, so that's five tons each. Uh, I do not need the uh, settings right there. Um, I don't know if we'll get to actually launching these today, though. Uh, I am kind of getting a bit tired. Because I've been doing nothing but school and work for the past. That's way too fucking long. But um, we will we will at least uh, finish some of the uh, some of what we're doing today. So uh, okay. Now we just need a a rocket. Which we will go ahead and we will build a rocket. Those are only five ton payloads, which means that you know, um, they're only five ton payloads. Which meaning that we don't need that big of a rocket to lob them out to the moon for the mun. Which is which is very very nice. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh egg type very 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 big very big uh let's see argon oh yeah because of the near future mods i haven't really messed around all that much with near future specifically oh that's a cursed asymmetric fairing for a proton that spud that you just sent me. Yeah, okay. What's the point behind that? What what payload would this accommodate? Um Uh Yeah, Varda W1 just touched down after I don't know how fucking long. Uh let's see. Uh let's see. It, it's been up there for quite a while. And they finally got their license to land. I want to know the story behind that. They just straight up not think that... They just said, oh yeah, we don't need a license for this. IRC, that was a, that was a solute? Oh, that was for a solute? Okay, but I'm not sure. Um... Let's see, what... Sorry, my mind is, is not... My mind is like, eh. What, what fuel tanks do I need again? Uh... Are they all the way down here? Uh, yeah, Rocket Max brand fuel tank. We're gonna go with orange tank because orange tank cool. Um, Ectate liquid hydrogen engine. Um, only paired with an appropriate amount of boosters because it's a standard spud. You don't have to worry about like boil off, do you? In this, I would assume not. But uh. I would assume no, but I'm not 100% sure because I haven't played around. Uh, I think there actually is boil off. Is there boil off for, um, LH2 oxygen? Actually, now I'm curious. Uh, let's see.
Let's just plop this out and put it in space and see if there is actually boil off. Um, that that would be that would be interesting. Uh, this is a this is a liquid hydrogen hydrogen tank. So if I just like set this into orbit around Kerbin, and then just warp. Oh yeah, there is there is boil off for liquid hydrogen. Huh. Yeah. There is a liquid hydrogen boil off. It's very slow. Like, I'm 13 days in, and that's barely made a dent. Of course, if this were real life, it would be a lot... <laughs> a lot more serious. Enable cooling. Boil off insulated. Oh, I can insulate the boil off, and it's, it's like, perfectly fine now. Um, uh, interesting. That's, 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 that's interesting. Um. Yeah, okay. And now my electric charge started going down. So if I disable the cooling. Yeah, my electric charge goes back up. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. Um. Shit, now I'm curious. Because, uh. That's actually kind of neat. That's just another thing you have to worry about. Um. Now I'm curious though, if we get Woodstock out, right? Because these are these are liquid fuel. Methane boils off too, I'm pretty sure. I'm wondering if um uh just the liquid fuel, if that boils off. Ugh. Liquid fuel is a seem to be kerosene and does not boil off. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um Okay, uh, let's see. How long have I been going for? About two hours. Um, yeah, we actually got some, uh, we got some nice stuff. Uh, all games. Well, never mind. Uh, let's see, anything else? I kind of, I've been building for two hours. I can only really do this for so long. Um, once we get into flying missions, though. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've gone ahead and I've built the payloads. We've started integrating them onto the, onto the spacecraft. Um, now I just need to build the rocket, which I might just go ahead and build the rocket. And the rocket won't take long, actually. Um, but I don't really feel like doing it today. I think we're gonna just about end the stream here. Um, but yeah, next time, which might be tomorrow, depending on how long D&D &D goes tomorrow, um, I, uh... I, um, uh, I might be back tomorrow with the stream, uh, certainly Friday with KSP, but I think for now, I am going to just end the stream, and, uh, let's see, we are going to raid somebody, good night, well, thank you for watching, Spud, and, uh, good night. Uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for all for watching. We are going to raid. Uh, EJ is playing right now, but I'm going to raid Nova Raptor because I've seen him in EJ's chat a whole bunch and he seems like a cool guy. But thank you all for watching. Thank you, Spud. Uh, thank you for the people who followed. Thank you, A Goofy Goobers and Hoxie Hal for following. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, goodbye, everybody.